So good morning, everyone. As you can see from the title uh, of from this slide, the title is Basic and State of the Art of Quantum Chemistry Method. It is indeed a very big topic, and this method can be introduced from very diverse uh, perspective. So in my only one hour talk, I would like to introduce them from a native quantum chemistry viewpoint. And I hope that after my talk, you have a very basic understanding what are quantum chemistry methods and how do they perform. In computational material science, we want to know the electronic structure information of materials. This is very crucial to have a better, better understanding of the properties and a better design of the speci uh, specific purpose devices. Right? In principle, we can answer this question by solving the many electron shedding equation. This is the key message you, you, you have got, you have got from uh, many talk in, the pre in previous talk in, my, uh, in this workshop. However, it is a very hard task uh, because the solving this equation is a three and dimensional problem. So we need to find a good approximation. It is also another very key concept you learn from this workshop. Mm. There are several independent pathways to approach the exact solution. And density functional theory uh, is the leading first principle method uh, at the present because there are a number of widely used exchange correlation functions in the market with reasonable accuracy and very high efficiency. However, again, you learned from the previous talk that there are several uh, uh, drawbacks related to the DFT development, including weak interaction, reaction barrier high, charge transfer driven properties, and even strong correlation. These properties uh, cannot be answered very well by current DFT. And more importantly, despite we know that uh, exact dense functional has been somewhere, but we don't know how to approach, right? Quantum chemistry methods are rooted in the wave function theory. Unlike DFT, it provides a systematic way to approach the exact solution. Many uh, molecular perturbation approach and uh, couple cluster approach are two um, uh, widely used uh, strategies in quantum chemistry methods to develop uh, good approximation. Unlike DFT, uh, wave function based method go beyond the mean field approximation directly and take the electron electron into account explicitly in the wave function expansion. Therefore, improvable, uh, improvable accuracy together with potentially richer information make quantum chemistry method very promising <coughs> for some uh, critical case in computational material science. For example, uh, uh, strongly cor uh, cor correlation driven uh, transition metal oxide, something like that. As you might know, MP2 and CCSDT are two most popular used, uh, m most widely used uh, quantum chemistry method at the present. They are the name of two, uh, br uh, of two methods called the second order molecular perturbation theory and couple cluster approach with single, double, and perturbative triple excitation. MP2 is the simplest wave function based method and its computational cost scale as fifth order with respect to the system size. It has been one order magnitude higher than uh, um, what did they use hybrid functional, for example, PBE0, B3, or HSE. CCSDT is considered as a god standard in quantum chemistry. It can be very accurate. However, its computational cost is <coughs> two order of magnitude higher than the MP2 method. Mm. Before we proceed to the basic uh, concept of these two methods, I think you would like to know why MP2 and CCSDT are the most popular wave function based quantum chemistry method. In this slide, I, I would like to sh uh, answer this question by their performance in several chemical uh, interactions. You can see that a CCSDT, right, is indeed a gold standard. It showed an overwhelming performance over all the other methods. And indeed, it has been used to serve an ultimate benchmark of the development of, of other methods in quantum chemistry. However, this method is very expensive. So most of the state-of-the-art development based, based on CCSDT are devoted to enhance its applicability, including large-scale parallel CCSDT implementation, aiming to have a efficient use of today's and tomorrow's supercomputer. Reduce or, uh, scaling CCSDT algorithm, try to uh, reduce the computational complexity without losing of accuracy. And the other kind of improvement, like couple cluster 
a couple electron pair approximation share a similar motivation, but following a slightly different methodology. Uh, due to the rapid the, uh, growth of the computational capacity, it's now getting more and more, more and more attention of using quantum chemistry method in computational material science. We are also expecting that CSDT can provide ultimate benchmark for the for solid uh, in computational material science. Unlike CSDT, MP2 itself is not accurate enough. However, we can see that at the least it surpasses DFT in many important properties, including weak interaction and charge transfer driven properties, which are not shown here. Large scale parallel MP2 implementation and the reduced scale MP2 algorithm are two uh, active topics in the MP2 implementation. And some other people try to improve the accuracy of MP2, um, but still keep the efficiency, I'm, I mean, do not increase the computational cost. A celebrated family of this kind of MP2 based improvement is the so called double hybrid density function approximations. Before I briefly review, uh, so from, from here, I would like to uh, review you some uh, basic concept of MP2 and SSDT. As I said, we can introduce that from very diverse uh, perspective. So here I use some native quantum chemistry viewpoint, saying using uh, elementary configuration, uh, configuration space concept to describe MP2 and CSSDT using the so-called configuration interaction concept. Unlike DFT, uh, most of the quantum chemistry method, um, to be more precisely, more or how to say that single slate, a uh, single reference quantum chemistry method are based on Hutching Fock approximation. Hutching Fock theory is a mean field approximation. The ap approximated wave function is a sin single slater determinant, comprising of a set of single uh, particle Hutching Fock orbital. These orbitals are determined by minimizing the energy, resulting in the Hutching Fock single particle equation with the well known Hutching Fock Fock operator. As I said, Hutching Fock theory is a mean field approximation. Therefore, it completely missed the subtle instantaneous electron electron interactions in the model. So, it has led to the most accepted definition of correlation energy, made by Lufting that the so called correlation energy is the difference between the exact energy and Hutching Fock energy. So, take the missing subtle electron electron into account in the correlation energy. With this definition, it is a, nature's it's, it is a very nature choice to develop quantum chemistry-based correlation method on top of hutching fog approximations. It leads to a very key concept in quantum chemistry method development called configuration space, which is comprised by the hutching fog ground state together of all uh, hutching fog excited state. You see, here if we uh, excite one uh, occupy orbital to Walsh orbital, it called sing, uh, single excitation configuration. Uh, we can do this excitation and uh, so forth like that. Without proof, I just want to highlight and uh, affect that the configuration, configuration space is complete uh, uh, Hilbert space in complete basic limit, which can be used to exactly expand the wave function of any many body shading Hamiltonian like this. It is the so called CI expanded wave function. In the talk, I, for simplicity, I will ignore the electron the indistinguishability. In the talk, it means that I ignore the prefactor in this expansion cluster. It does not change any conclusion I will, I will talk and make in this talk. From this expansion, it is easy to find that we have made a, an actual constraint that uh, the so-called intermediate uh, normalization, which means the integral between hutching for ground state and the wave function, uh, CI type wave function equal to zero. In consequence, the integral of the CI expanded wave function um, is not normalized anymore. anymore. And these integrals is uh, linearly uh, proportionally to the number of electrons. With this definition, we can easily rewrite the uh, Schrodinger equation to the Schrodinger-like equation for correlation energy only, that is. 
and we can write down the correlation energy in this way. We know that electronic hamiltonian contains only one electron uh, operator, or at the most two electron operator. So, uh, we, so which means that correlation energy only depends on the single excitation and double excitation, because higher order excitation contains more than two orbitals, differ from the hydrogen fog ground state, right? They do not make any explicit contribution to the correlation energy evaluation. And we can write down the correlation energy uh, in the uh, hydrogen fog orbital representation like this. Because this orbital, a hydrogen fog orbital, so they are eigenvector of this fog operator. Therefore, the matrix elements of the Hamiltonian with single excited configuration are zero. This is the famous uh, Brillouin series in quantum chemistry. With this theory, we can reach another way, more important series in quantum chemistry that if we would know the precise value of double excitation coefficient, we would know the exact correlation energy. Unfortunately, all configuration of excited state, uh, configura uh, co uh, excited state uh, indirectly depends on each other, which means that in order to get precise double excitation configuration, we need to take all expansion into account, which reach the so-called full CR expansion. And the number of the excited uh, configuration is uh, scarce exponentially with respect to the system size. So it is very difficult to solve. Therefore, the central task in quantum chemistry is to find a better approximation to the double excited coefficient. We know that in DFT, right, the central task is to find a better approximation to the exchange correlation functional. But in quantum chemistry, it can be specified as a bad, find better approximation to the double excited coefi uh, configura uh, coefficient. From this perspective, the second order model perturbation theory is nothing but a single order perturbation treatment of the uh, double excited coefficient. With this, defi with this definition, we can expand MP2 wave function in CI expansion type and write down MP2 correlation in the famous sum over state formula. However, a natural way to determine the coefficient is by solving a set of a secular equation which is equivalent to solve a shading equation by variational principles. And the simplest uh, CI expansion is the so-called truncated configuration integration with only double excitation, CID. And we can write down the CID secular equation in this way simply. And with this definition, we can go to the CID coefficient like this and also CID correlation like this. From this formula, we know that we should solve the uh, CID correlation energy iteratively because it depends on, the, on itself, right? Before we proceed to more sophisticated quantum chemistry method, I have introduced you another key uh, concept in quantum chemistry method development called size extensivity, which is saying that for a super system consisting, uh, consisting of non-interacting subsystem A and B, a method which is size extensive should provide the energy of a supersistence as the sum of the energy of A and energy of B taken by themselves. It is a very crucial uh, criterion. A method which is not size extensive has no hope to predict correct relative energy of molecules with different quality, uh, different uh, size. This is a key quantity uh, in to simulate, uh, to make computation simulation in chemistry. Butler suggests that the size extensivity can be uh, defined in a more mathematical way, which is saying that the correlation energy should be asymptotically proportional to the number of the electron n, like this. Because in condensed matter systems, which contains infinite, infinite number of um, electrons, so an approximation that is not size extensive doesn't work anywhere, anywhere, anyway. Unfortunately, all truncated DFT, uh, truncated CID method or C, uh, CI approaches are not size extensive. Uh, the typical example to make this dem demonstration is the cluster of hydrogen dimer molecules in the minimal basis set. In minimal basis set, there's only two 
um, orbitals, anti uh, binding, binding orbital and anti binding orbital for H2 molecule. And we can write down the Hamiltonian very easily in configuration space like this. And therefore, we can solve the CID total energy analytically in this way. And without proof, I can also show you that the analytical uh, CID correlation for clusters with N non interacting uh, hydrogen dimer molecules can be written in this way. Clearly, CID energy is not uh, proportional to a number of the systems, uh, the, uh, the electrons in the system, right? Which means that uh, because this uh, beha uh, behavior is lower than linear, which means in the condensed matter systems, the CID correlation is zero, which is identical to Hutching Fock approximation. Therefore, it, doesn't, it is not good. But why CID or truncated uh, CI measure is uh, not size extensive? In 1940s, Hopper tried to understand the correlation contribution in CID uh, equation using a many body perturbation uh, strategy. He suggests that if, if we start from MP2 correlation and MP2 wave function in the, in the CID equation iteration, after first iteration, the CID correlation is MP2 energy plus third order, uh, third order correlation correction. And higher order many body correlation will be introduced during the iteration and iteration. It is one kind of renormalization of many body perturbation theory. However, CID equation contains the second type of the renormalization. You see, the lower level energy will be renormalized in a certain amount, right? Without proof, and I will show you later, uh, monopolar perturbation co uh, energy are uh, size extensive. It's proportional to a number of electrons. And as I show you above, any CI type expansion, the integrals of themselves are proportional to the number of electrons, which means that the correlation energy, CID correlation energy, has been not size extensive even after one iteration. Because the lower level correlation, uh, uh, many body perturbation energy will be rescaled or renormalized. To have a deeper understanding, I show you the MP2 correlation in diagram uh, diagrammatic representation like this. We know that MP2 correlation contains two linked second order excited diagrams. This is direct term and this is exchange term. And in CID equations, these two terms will be renormalized by a factor. And you can easily find the duration from any typical uh, uh, textbook that this renormalization term can be rewrite into several unlinked force order excited terms, but with a negative prefactor. But what, what is link and unlinked correlation means? For simplicity, I will, uh, I, I, I will consider them as two different correlation modes in many body correlation. The so-called linked correlation is the correlating mode, which involves an enta entangle or electrons um, in the interaction. And unlinked correlation contains several independent sub-correlation modes, which, which are linked by themselves. Without proof, I show you, um, I tell you the fact that the linked correlation are size extensive, but unlinked correlation are not. Okay? Keep this figure uh, in mind. I can show you a very important uh, observation from this uh, derivation that the renormalized diagrams in the truncated CI expansion are not size extensive. However, this term can be exactly eliminated by the unlinked high order excited diagrams. With this observation, I can, I can um, guide you to some important conclusion in quantum chemistry method development. In many body perturbation po uh, point of view, because linked diagrams are size extensive, but unlinked ones are not. Therefore, we cannot include unlinked diagrams in uh, correlation in the many body perturbation expansion. Luckily, the monopolar perturbation theory satisfies this constraint. It is, also, it is also why we call monopolar perturbation theory as linked theory di uh, diagram theory. In other words, MPM method, including MP2, are size extensive. However, in configuration interaction approach, they renormalize the linked diagrams. 
Meanwhile, it includes unlinked diagram. Both of them are not size extensive. In 4CI, which is the exact solution of a shading equation, which the renormalized low order diagrams cancel out exactly with some unlinked diagrams in higher order. Therefore, it is size extensive. Unfortunately, this cancellation breaks down in the truncated CI method because, it, uh, for, to be specific, CID is not size extensive because it contains renormalized second order diagrams. However, the, the unlinked fourth order diagrams are completely excluded. So, how can we go further? To make the CI expansion type, uh, type wave function size extensive, we know that we can, uh, so uh, to understand this question, we can consider electron correlation cluster by cluster. The so called truncated CI is trying to distinguish electron correlation by the number of electrons. So, the CID uh, uh, equation contains two electron correlation clusters like this, right? The CISD is the to take another correlation cluster called one electron correlation cluster into account. However, truncated CID method cannot distinguish link and unlinked clusters, which are key, uh, which are key concepts to address the self integration problems in uh, self, uh, no, the size extensive problems in quantum chemistry method. To be specific, I list the connection between the link and link cluster up to the Force excitation. On the right hand side, uh, on the left hand side, it is the uh, coefficient of the CI expansion. And they can decouple to link diagrams and unlinked diagrams. The rule one are linked diagrams, which are renormalized partially in the CI iteration. And the red one are unlinked cluster uh, in, uh, uh, at the fourth order and third order level. They are very crucial, they are very important to cancel out the renormalized term in a lower level, but excluded in the CISD approximation. Therefore, the so-called couple cluster approach is the most elegant way and most efficient way to take unlinked uh, diagram in high order into account with the same excitation level, okay? Therefore, the full CIS couple cluster approach is identical to the full CI method. In principle, they are exact. And meanwhile, uh, the couple cluster approach approximation with the same excited excitation level share the same computational cost as the uh, CI approach with the same excitation level. For example, CISDT share the same computational cost to CISD. More importantly, CIS approach are size extensive. Recently, um, it, um, it has become possible for small molecule to pursue very accurate description of in, in CSSDT and CSSDTQ. However, the computational costs are very, very expensive. On the other hand, we realize that uh, we should go beyond CSSD if high accuracy is required. Uh, the one of most successful compromise is the so-called God standard CSSDT model, which take the um, uh, three per uh, perturbative, uh, perturbative correction to the converged double hybrid, uh, double Excited coefficient of CSDT calculation, the triple excitation correction features, and seventh order scaling with respect to the system size and rate like this. This figure I show you um, the arrow in CI and CIS approach <coughs> in the total energy calculation of CO molecules. And you can see that with, this, with a given excitation level, CC model are about one order of magnitude more accurate than the CI model. And this observation um, will become even more significant for larger molecules, larger systems. And in extended systems, CC approach holds the possibility to be accurate. But CI doesn't work because, it's, because they are not size extensive. Mm. Uh, to, sum, uh, to summarize, in, uh, in this section, I try to introduce MP2 and CSSDT method in the native quantum chemistry viewpoint, in particular in the expansion of the so-called configuration space with the CI types expansion. Due to the intermediate, intermediate randomization constraint in this expansion, we can write down the correlation energy, which depends on the double excitation configurations only. And 
size extensivity is a very important property in the quantum chemistry method development. And both MP2 and CSSDT are size extensive. It is the theoretical guarantee of using this method um, to large and even extended systems. We know that um, density function theory is the working horse in computational material, uh, computational material science at the present. And the quantum chemistry methods are not so productive, right? Because they are too expensive. They have, however, analysts and active are the development toward higher accuracy and higher efficiency based on MP2 and CSSDT. Here I will show you some challenges and the state of the art developments of these two methods. Unlike CSSDT, MP2 itself is not accurate, so we need to make improvement over on top of MP2. At the present, there are two different ways to go. The first way is somewhat not empirical. Uh, this is the diagrammatic representation of MP2 I show you above, direct turn and exchange turn. The widely used uh, fifth order density functional method in DFT is the so-called random phase oxidation, which can be considered as a renormalization of the direct turn by including high and higher order bubble ring diagrams into account. However, random fix approximation RPA itself is suffering very heavy self correlation error. It means that for one electron systems, RPA uh, provides non zero correlation energy. It is very crucial. Okay? So we need to do a similar renormalization of a second order, a second exchange, a second order exchange term, which is called a source act correction to the RPA. And Singh realized that if we put a many body perturbation theory, in DFT context, it means that we now uh, expand the configuration space using constant orbital but not hatching fog orbital. Then the Nussberg theory I, I, uh, I, I show you above doesn't vary, uh, doesn't hold. So the single excitation indeed explicitly contribute to the co uh, correlation energy. If we make the renormalization of this term as well and take the three renormalization terms together, we reach the so-called renormalized second order perturbation theory, RPD2. Single demonstrate that compared to RPA and standard MP2 method, RPD2 can show a significant improvement uh, in the descri description of zero chemical interaction. However, the price, of course, is quite a high actual computational effort. Another way to go is somewhat empirical which try to in improve the accuracy of MP2 method, but without losing the uh, efficiency. A successful family uh, of this kind of MP2-based improvement is the double hybrid functional. The double hybrid here means that we try to introduce hutchinson fock like exchange and MP2-like correlation in the functional formulation. And if we take this formulation and optimize the parameter with respect to a set of thermal chemistry data, I can introduce my first hybrid function called XRG3. Mm -hmm. I show you that XRG3 can be extremely accurate for at least main group element. So for reaction barrier height and weak interaction, CCS, uh, XRG3 uh, results are in a very good ex uh, excellent agreement with the result provided by CSSDT, which is the benchmark data for almost all the functional developments in quantum chemistry. Mm -hmm. Slow basis set convergence is a very big challenge for the use of quantum chemistry method because in this quantum chemistry, chemistry method, we try to expand the wave function in CI uh, configuration space. Okay, so we try to explicitly take electron electron into account in, in the function expansion. It, resu uh, it results in the so called electron pair wave function, which behavior uh, features a cusp, uh, cusp, hole, a cusp uh, condition when two electrons get close to, to each other. Unfortunately, none of the existing basis set can describe this cusp condition effectively. So the most popular way to converge MP2 and CSSDT result is by using the so-called basic extrapolation scheme for all this kind of formulation more or less. Mm. In order to have a good and accurate basic set convergence extrapolation, we indeed need a sequence of basic set, 
which can show a consistent convergence of correlation. Based on this, this convergence behavior, we can make an extrapolation. Otherwise, it doesn't, it doesn't work, right? And in FHIMs, you know we are using numeric Adam Center uh, NAO based set. We also provide you a series of NAO based set with variance correlation consistency called NAO VCC NZ, which is now the default choice in M's code for the ones correlation method, including MP2, CSS, DT, RP, and so forth. Another way to address the base set issue is the so-called explicitly correlated co uh, method R12, F12, which is trying to uh, introduce the electron-electron distance in the CI, uh, in the C, uh, CI expansion, which means that we introduce orthogonal complete com complement to the hatching fork configuration space. Due to the different way to generalize this orthogonal uh, a complement of a configuration space and a different way to generate an actual force center integral. They need in this method, there are many variants of F, uh, R1 to F1 to I propose in quantum chemistry. If you are interested, you can um, take a look of this very nice reviews paper in, chem, uh, in chemical review. But anyway, um, high computational cost is the main barrier for a practical and routine use of quantum chemistry method. From this figure, we can see that compared to PPE and PP0, the computational cost and memory consumption of MP2, the green one, right, and the red one for CSSDT increased dramatically and very, very quickly. To address this challenge, people try to use the re uh, re resolution of identity to reduce the memory consumption of CSSDT and MP2, which is a technique to decompose the Fourth rank, uh, fourth rank uh, electronic repulsive uh, integral to several third rank uh, quantities like this. And resolution of identity has been used to combine with MP2 and CSSDT in many different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And we can, further, um, we, can, we can further improve the memory uh, performance by decomposed fourth order quantity to second order quantity even, by utilizing the locality in resolution identity. This is the work in our group and has been published two years ago. And the so-called tensor hypercontraction scheme is another kind of more mathematical way to decompose higher order tensor to low order. Some people have shown that tensor hypercontraction scheme is very promising for MP2 and CSSDT implementation. However, accuracy and numerical, and particular numerical stability, need uh, re valuation and uh, investigation systematically. For computational timing, you see, CSSDT is infeasible, right? Uh, the, the, the calculation of CSSDT is infeasible for any real systems. This is the plot for very simple hydrogen uh, water clusters with double theta beta set. You see that with 30 clusters, uh, with 30 waters, we need at, uh, more than two months for CCSDT calculation. On the one hand, we can address this challenge by utilizing the, uh, by use the full power of today's supercomputer. It means that we need higher or uh, large scale parallel, in, uh, parallel implementation with high parallel efficiency. Uh, you can imagine if we use uh, and if we have an implementation with perfect parallel, uh, parallel efficiency, we can reduce this calculation to one day if we take 100 courses, right? On the other hand, we can try to reduce the computational cost by reduce the scaling from seventh order to lower order. This is the so-called reduced scaling algorithm. This kinds of concept try to use the near sizeness of correlation in physics. However, this concept cannot be used straightforward because canonical MP2 mass and canonical CSSDT are represented in the molecular orbital represent, uh, uh, by, by using molecular orbital, which are delocalized. So we cannot straightforward utilize locality in correlations. Two popular ways to solve is take advantage of some sophisticated mathematical transformation and rewrite MP2 or CSSDT formulation into the representation based on atom center orbital uh, basis set or localized molecular orbital. 
if you are interested in this topic, you can start reading from some reference I show you here. Okay. Recently, it's, it is now uh, it is becoming more and more interest to implement and test um, quantum chemistry method for periodic case. However, in periodic boundary condition, the challenge I mentioned above becomes more serious. Unfortunately, most of the state of the art development I mentioned above are proposed were proposed and mainly uh, validate in finite molecules. Okay. So here I briefly show you some uh, current progress in our FHIM's code. To be specific, we now have canonical MP2 and canonical CCSD, CCSD for both molecules and solid. Mm -hmm. The complete CCSDT is now available for molecules, and the periodic version is coming soon. Mm -hmm. More importantly, we now have a reduced gallium MP2 implementation to large molecule and large solid. With, so, uh, with hundreds of atoms. All these implementation are using the resolution of identity and featuring a high uh, parallel efficiency. This is a flowchart of theoretic MP2 implementation, implementation in M's code. The parallelization is designed with respect to both k grid and molecular orbitals in order to achieve high efficient distribu me distributed memory calculation we use the scalar pack um, blocks to uh, distribute four center integrals and the corresponding three center i coefficient. We have demonstrated that very high parallel efficiency can be achieved in uh, commodity supercomputers com uh, computers up to several thousands of CPU. Um, here I selected show you uh, the basic convergence of our periodic MP2 result for several uh, uh, bugs of several crystals with cubic structure, diamond, silica, MGO, and LP, ALP. From this figure, we can see that the base set is not a big issue to, uh, to, to converge for, period, uh, for lattice constant or bug modules, like a, a geometry, uh, the so-called geometry information, right? The third order, uh, the NAO triple theta base set has been good enough to ap approach the desired accuracy if we compare to the complete base set limit result. However, the slow base set convergence is indeed a big challenge, a problem for the cohesive energy calculation. Compared to the complete base set limit, the base set error in the four z base set are still remaining about 100 mm -hmm, milliEV, you see, for all different kind of mm, uh, materials. One of big challenge in, in real and daily chemistry is that we need to find a good approximation which can describe both molecules and solid in a balanced way, right? It's extremely, it's crucial for the catalytic systems because the catalyst procedure is in principle related to the uh, bond breaking and forming of small molecules. However, accommodation of the bug is essential to the catalyst uh, catalyst effect. B3 lead functional is very popular in quantum chemistry because it can provide quite accurate description for molecules. Here I take G2 with several hundreds of molecules uh, into account. The, air, the, the mean absolute deviation is only about 130 milliEV. However, it doesn't work or works very bad for solid. Here I take 10 cohesive energy. For example, you see the mean absolute deviation it's about 400 milliEV. For comparison, the PBE type of function performs much better for, um, for, for, for solid. But for periodic, uh, but it's not, uh, not satisfied for molecule. MP2 method itself is not accurate. But here I show you that the MP2 based improvement, the double hyperfunctional, can indeed provide very good balance to describe both solid and molecules. I will reduce scaling MP2 implementation. Um, it's using Laplace transformation, okay, to rewrite MP2 a correlation into uh, atomic orbital representation. However, unlike a standard formulation, Laplace transform MP2 need to take another kind of four center integral into account, the so-called uh, contracted four center integrals. Compared to the 
standard for central integrate, this kind of quantity is a little bit more delocalized, despite still localized. So we develop and adapted a localized resolution of that identity to reduce the computational cost in our Laplace transform amplitude implementation. We first examined our function, our mass development using a cluster with 10 waters to 150 waters. The black curve is the practical total energy of canonical MP2 calculations. We see that the scaling, uh, the, the computation scaling is fourth order with respect to the system size. It is dominated by the generation of RI coefficient, the standard RI coefficient. For comparison, our Laplace transform MP2 implementation, the, the yellow one, right, features a near quadratic scaling with respect to the system size. More importantly, the break-even point happens way earlier beyond cluster 20, uh, 20 water cluster and, and 30 water clusters. I would like to emphasize that this very good efficiency a performance uh, can be achieved without losing any accuracy because very high screening criteria has been used to suppress the MP2 correlation energy, uh, energy error below 1 mEV for the whole plot. Our uh, Laplace transform MP2 is also available for periodic case. Here I show you the performance for, molecular, uh, for water molecule absorption on the titanium oxide surfaces. This is the plot for the, for the numerical convergence of water absorption energy with respect to the model size in different direction, uh, layers, uh, the, the, the layers and x and y z direction. In order to achieve 20 mV accuracy, we need to use at, the, at least three layers together with three by four surface layers, which contains more than 200 atoms. Apparently, canonical MP2 cannot handle this kind of systems efficiently and practically, which highlights again the importance and the timeliness to develop lower scaling quantum chemistry method for solid. Our CCSDT implementation is using resolution of identity technique. As I show, uh, uh, as I, uh, show you, the resolution of identity CCSDT implementation has been proposed several years ago. However, there's no uh, systematic accuracy validation of this kind of approximation because there's no RI method, uh, there's no RI basis set specifically optimized with respect to CCSDT energy. And in our project, we are happy to see that the RI basis set we use in, in FHMs is very, is very good, and which can be used to converge CCSDT results within one mEV compared to the canonical and analytic CCSDT implementation with the same basis set. And in maximum, the error is, is lower than three mEV in total. And we also use uh, uh, one dimension, two dimension, and three dimension systems to, to demonstrate our implementation. We see that the parallelization efficiency is quite high and can be scalable to thousands of CPU. Here we use uh, around 2,600 uh, 2, cores and a very high efficiency can be achieved with thousands of CPU. We also, um, we also uh, test the numerical convergence of our CCSDT implementation in finite cluster model and periodic boundary model with respect to the cluster size and the unit cell size. And we can see that it can converge to the same result in the complete, in the extreme, in the, in the complete actuality limit. The discrepancy can be lower than 2 mEV, which indicates our CCSDT implementation can handle both molecule and solid in the in the same numerical footing, which is very crucial if you want to use the method uh, in your real application and you also want to compare if the cluster model or its periodic model satisfy, uh, is a better choice for your specific uh, research. So in summary, I show you some basic knowledge of quantum chemistry method and also briefly review the challenge and state of the art development of this method. Later on, I show you some uh, relevant progress in our FHM's code. Considering that 
the computational power uh, increased very dramatic, very quickly. Uh, so we, uh, we cannot imagine how powerful of the supercomputer computers in ten years ago, uh, ten years later, right? And also considering that we have uh, quantum chemistry method can provide quite predictable power to some very crucial cases in computational material science. For example, strong correlation related charge, uh, uh, transition metal oxide or some other charge transfer driving properties. Uh, I think quantum chemistry method will definitely attract more and more attention in computational science. So it is a time for you to get some knowledge what is quantum chemistry and how do they perform. It is the target of my talk and how I hope I make it. And in the end, I would like to uh, thank Matthias for his last uh, and su last support in my group and also acknowledge two people who are key person in the very challenging project in, my, uh, in this talk. In the end, I would like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>